going on YouTube, Geosnoid here, so in today's video I have great news for those of you waiting for an iOS 13.0, 13.1.2, 13.2 jailbreak and also for the 12.4.1. A new vulnerability has been released, in fact a couple of vulnerabilities which may be usable for a jailbreak. Now just a few days ago the SSD Secure Disclosure posted an advisory in here which says quote iOS jailbreak via Cinebox Escape and kernel read and write leading to RCE which means remote code execution. Now they detail all the information about the vulnerabilities. There are three vulnerabilities in here with CVEs which are actually present in the security contents of the iOS 13.2. So basically before 13.2 these are all present. Now these were actually presented at the Typhoon Pawn event and they were actually very important. It says in here affected systems iOS 12.3.1 but that's just the version where the vulnerabilities were first spotted. They were actually patched in 13.2. Now these are actually very important because what this is is actually a combination combination of vulnerabilities in order to achieve a very important thing and that is basically part of a jailbreak. Now Jake James posted in here quote sandbox escape plus kernel exploit plus root shell for iOS 12.3.1 it says the bug is patched in 13.2 so porting it to 13.0 to 13.1.x might be possible and in fact this is possible but for the A12 devices this is going to be pretty hard especially since the kernel vulnerability is actually hijacking the uh, PC control which is basically the program counter and Jake James says in here quote the kernel exploit seems to hijack the PC control therefore it won't work on A12 or A13 unless they forgot and use PLR but yeah unlikely. The bug is a buffer overflow so it might be possible to use other strategies so it's not completely dead on A12 and A13 devices either. Now if you want a specific version to stay on especially if you have an A12 or A13 device stay below 13.2 for example 13.1.3, 13.1.2, 13.0 these are very very good versions to stay on for a jailbreak. Remember that the A12 devices which are basically the iPhone XS, XS Max and XR and the A13 devices which are the iPhone 11 and 11 Pro are not compatible with the Checkmate jailbreak and of course with the Checkmate exploit so you're basically stuck with TFP0 and waiting for TFP0 exploits. But yeah this in here is actually pretty interesting. What they're doing is to basically chain together a couple of vulnerabilities in order to achieve the end goal. Now they did post a POC or proof of concept which is in here on the uh, GitHub. The code is available and one can see it and of course one can edit it and try it and of course work on top of it which is actually quite good. However, this is actually so powerful we might be able to get TFP0 on 12.4.1, 13, 13.1, 13.1.2 and so on given the right conditions. Jake James posted this in here, he said quote, unfortunately someone told me that the binary with the bug is now sandboxed on iOS 13. That means no iOS 13 TFP0 with this until a new sandbox escape but I'm positive we'll see another TFP0 before that. Well apparently someone in the comments in here posted this which apparently is a sandbox escape by Ian Beer which has been released just a couple of days ago how convenient and this one is also supporting iOS 13.1.2, iOS 13.0 and so on because according to Ian Beer in here it was patched in iOS 13.2 so the missing component in order to get TFP0 on iOS 13 Jake James talks about has apparently been released. Now I just wonder if we can chain this iOS sandbox escape with the vulnerabilities in here in order to achieve TFP0 on iOS 13. So yeah that's definitely probable and we seem to have the right components we just need to try to put them up together. Now I'm not sure if these can be combined but if they can as just Jake James says in here we might be able to get TFP0 on iOS 13 after iOS 13.1.3 which is actually quite good. The 13.2 is a bad version to stay on for these vulnerabilities because the iOS 13.2 is not compatible with any of these in here. All these vulnerabilities were patched in the iOS 13.2 so the iOS 13.2 does patch a lot of vulnerabilities especially kernel vulnerabilities which means that both iOS 13.2 and 13.2.2 are very bad versions to stay on for A12 devices and for A13 devices. For the rest of the devices if you're interested in an uncovered style jailbreak which is basically semi untethered then yeah you need TFP0 and staying on 13.1.3 and lower would definitely prove to be good. However if you don't and if you can use a semi tethered jailbreak like the check rain you can already jailbreak 13.2.2 as we speak 
on the iPhone 8, iPhone 10, iPhone 7, but not on the newer models like the iPhone 11 or the iPhone 10s, 10s Max and 10R and so on. So yeah, in the end, this is actually a very, very good write up in here. The vulnerabilities are actually quite astonishing and they actually go through a very good range. It says here, this post describes a series of vulnerabilities found in iOS 12.3.1 which when chained together allows execution of code in the context of the kernel. Now to have vulnerabilities found in 12.3.1 and patched on 13.2, that's actually quite a lot of vulnerable iOS versions in between, including 12.4.1 and of course 12.4.2 where it applies. However, for the A12 devices, we might have that problem with the uh, pointer authentication codes, which of course would hinder the uh, possibility to get this going because that vulnerability controls the PC, which is basically the program counter. However, even for the A12 devices, it's best to stay on 13.1.3 and lower because the 13.2 and 13.2.2 are actually pretty bad. So yeah, TFP0 for a jailbreak has basically been achieved as a POC or a proof of concept, but we still need to chain these together and hopefully the vulnerability by Ian Beer, the sandbox escaping here, might be usable in the context Jake James suggests in here. That's basically it guys, thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe to stay updated, I'm Geosnow and till next time, peace out.